Agenda. So item 9.1, the mayor and city council shall hear and discuss a presentation of the SR 347 corridor scoping study. This is about the process and the objectives by Sean Hill of the Maricopa Association of Governments and the overall project manager for the study effort. This is for discussion only. David, take it away. Good evening, Mayor Price, Vice Mayor Wade, Council Members, City Manager uh, Horst, ladies and gentlemen. As anyone who drives SR 347 can tell you, improvements uh, to 347 are sorely needed. And with each passing year, as you well know, uh, the roadway experience is more and more distressed. For several years, we've wrestled with how to improve the roadway, uh, which actually is not in our jurisdiction, and that's been a real wrestling match. But this year, with MAG, Maricopa Association of Governments, serving as the lead agency, we were able to launch the long-awaited SR-347 corridor scoping study in February 2019. We would like to thank MAG and Pinal County on behalf of the Pinal Regional Transportation Authority, who matched funds with Maricopa of $150,000 uh, to fund this critical study. I think this uh, project is great testimony to the value of agency relationships in transportation, as you say so often, Mayor Price. The consultant selected for the study uh, by a five agency uh, selection panel, by the way, is Wilson and Company, assisted by Burgess and uh, Nipel. And with us tonight, as you can see, is uh, Dan Morum and Amy. Could you stand for us, please, for the benefit of the audience? These are the real experts who guided us through five and a half, six years of transportation planning here in Maricopa, and we can't thank you folks enough. Our presenter tonight for this um, scoping study is Sean Hill from Maricopa Association of Governments. Sean is a senior uh, project manager, and uh, she's the overall project manager for this project. And with that, please welcome Sean. Thank you, David, and uh, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, my name is Sean Hill, and it is a true pleasure to be here. You know, I, every time I have to get up and give a really formal presentation, it makes me really nervous. And I wring my hands, and I don't know how to tell the story, and I don't know if I need to be really formal about it, or if I should just tell you the real deal, the story behind what's going on here. That's it. So tonight I'd like to tell you about the scoping study for State Route 347. There isn't a person in this room who doesn't know how important that study is. It's a scoping study, so one of the things that's really fun about it is we get to be visionaries. We get to really look at, so what could it be? Could it be one thing or could it be another? So this evening I'd like to tell you that our partners and the stakeholders in this scoping study are as you mentioned earlier, Mayor Price, the Arizona Department of Transportation, the Ak-Chin and Gila River Indian Communities, Pinnell and Maricopa Counties, as well as the city of Maricopa. So I'd like to tell you a story. I, I love telling stories that begin um, once upon a time, and at the end they lived heavily ever after. And I certainly hope that at the end that that's what happens here. But right now what we're doing is uh, well, I'd like to tell you about the journey that we're on thus far. So first, I want to tell you that we sat down as stakeholders. So every one of those stakeholders that I mentioned in the previous statement sat down here for half a day and we talked about who we are, what interest we have in this project, and so what people think we ought to start looking at to do for this corridor. The next thing we did was we took a look at, David, how do you make that up? Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the next thing we did is we sat down for a whole day and did a visioning workshop and we said, so what does the vision of this look like? And we said, the vision, and I thought Mayor Price really put this really, really well. Okay, so the vision of this is to provide a safe, reliable corridor that supports forecasted growth. So we didn't try to make it real complicated. We didn't try to say that it 
needs to be a million other things, but clearly it was backed up by goals to optimize the travel time, improve mobility, improve the safety, optimize the land use, optimize environmental outcomes, respect stakeholder interests and engagement, and maintain the current right-of-way and easements as much as possible. I'd like to emphasize that last statement as, uh, as something that we are really being mindful of. And as the natural evolution began to outline objectives to start to look at each of those goals, specifically like adding lanes and improving intersections, accommodating cyclists and, and transit, separating great intersections and managing access, supporting economic development while utilizing an efficient footprint, accommodating wildlife and following the NEPA process, public, providing public involvement opportunities, and being mindfully respectful of, the, of a responsible footprint. You'll hear that more than once. So the study process, I want you to just see this. You've seen it on boards outside. So the study process in, entails a project initiation, assessment of the needs, developing alternatives to be evaluated, and finally recommend, recommendations while working on all of these aspects from a three-fold approach. So that across the top, you see the initiation and the needs and the alternatives and the recommendation. But if you look down the side of it, you see that we're going to be doing this from a planning and engineering perspective, from stakeholder and public engagement perspective. And at the bottom, you see the yellow strip that talks about the environmental process. At this stage, we're doing a PEL, which is a checklist that is sort of pre-NEPA, but begins to mindfully take a look at so what does the environmental process entail? So David talked about this just briefly, but we, this is an outline of a project schedule that says, well, we started the process in February. Clearly, we didn't just start the process in February, but this timeline talks about how we started the process with our engineering consultant team in February go through many of the things that we just talked about, the needs assessment, the alternatives. I really like to look at that one, two, three, fourth line down. At the end of this, we're proposing to put together an implementation plan that has recommendations that we will put together with some final plans, a PEL, health statement, and then be back to both this council and other regional council at the Maricopa Association of Governments and all other councils that want to adopt this as an accepted concept after we get through with putting forth our ideas about what is possible. This gives us a, a quick overview of what it looks like to start with a universe of alternatives, go through some screening processes um, to get to the point where you have a preferred set of corridor improvement strategies, along with, at the end of this process, an alternatives evaluation report, uh, evaluation report. So at this stage, I'd like to show and tell the story where all those stakeholders we talked about earlier, we sat together in a two-day workshop. Everybody brought their best ideas, talked about all the al different alternatives that we could look at, both the corridor alternatives and the intersection alternatives. And then at the end of that became an evaluation uh, report that allows us to head into some engineering aspects. So this is not going to be surprising. So we saw some very traditional things like, well, why don't we widen the corridor? And why don't we think about a parkway concept? Has anybody thought about the future of transit in the area? What about some ITS strategies? Don't, don't we have you know, electronic things that can help us into our future, and, and to not be um, less than important also in this corridor should be our pedestrian and bicycle or multimodal operations as well. It's about improvements, no surprises here. What if we looked at grade separations at some of our um, intersections? What if we looked at interchange improvements at I-10? What if we looked at 
intersection solutions that aren't maybe just intersection improvements, but things that we um, have seen in other communities where we made left turns at a different place. So we had some really good ideas that we brought forth with this alternate strategies concept. The next thing you're going to hear and see a lot more of, and we started this afternoon this, um, out in the lobby, is a more outreach. So we've got a, a, a public involvement plan. We have information to share about what we perceive are the greatest needs, but want to gather input from others about those needs, what people are doing, how people are traveling this corridor, and what kinds of improvement strategies people would be interested in entertaining. So you'll see more about this. And I'd like to talk about here just briefly that our website for this project will be up and running before the end of the week, probably. We're going to have that. Amy told me that we were going to have both a Spanish and an English version posted to our website. We began to run out of our uh, survey out there. Fear not, we're going to be sure that we do an email blast as soon as we get our website up and running, and that everybody will have an electronic version of our survey and other opportunities as we uh, head through the end of this study or the rest of this study. So this talks about what are our next steps. So we've talked about this. You can see the timeline. We, we're going to develop alternatives. We have stakeholder outreach. We are outreaching to both city councils and um, tribal councils. We're developing those alternatives. We will have an implementation plan. And what I'm really proud about when we talk about that implementation plan, it says, so what we heard was people believe this was the number one thing, so what if this was the first thing we did? What if this was the second thing that we tried to propose? What if it was the third thing and the fourth thing that we proposed to do in this corridor? So that what we'll do then is, as we talked about earlier, come back in January or February and ask for different councils to accept our concepts and thoughts. I really was very energized by the understanding that Mayor Price presented to this chamber and the other members of the council that sometimes this can be a really long process. I have personally, because I've been in the valley and the region long enough, I've lived through that 35-mile um, journey to a very litigious uh, corridor that is the South Mountain Freeway. Sometimes you can end up with projects that really, really take a long time. Very proudly, we're going to be opening that corridor at the end of this year, but it was truly litigious and a very long, long journey. So I appreciated how well you enunciated that. I'm hoping that that's not what the case is for this corridor, but that when you talked about a very good understanding of the dollars available, we get to the end of this process and this fantastic vision of what this corridor can be, and we'll head into design concept <coughs> reports, environmental assessments, and then a real understanding of how to come back to different areas and ask for not only the design, but then eventually, as we saw with the overpass, construction of these projects. So um, that's what I have for you this evening, that I really think that this group is coming together as a great body and supporting what I believe will eventually be a corridor that represents um, ideals and, and works well for this community. And I appreciate very much having the opportunity to be here this evening and would be willing to answer any questions that I'm capable of, or I brought the real experts as well. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for having thank me you, this Sean. evening. Any uh, questions, Council? <laughs> Council, questions at this time? 
Uh, I know that, uh, you know, obviously you, you have a lot of folks uh, that are interested as uh, the open house suggested as, as do the council chambers this evening. But, um, you know, I think people are really waiting for that December report where the recommended alternatives come out. Um, you know, I think everybody has on their mind ideas of what they'd like to see or what they think will solve the problem. Uh, I think that one of the things I continue to learn is that just when I think a, a problem can be solved only one way, sometimes you can crack that nut in a, in a whole variety of different ways and, and solve it. Uh, uh, and I think that was kind of outlaid at the uh, design where we had a little pushback on the, uh, you know, the old Maricopa Road section uh, where the light is proposed by Healy River. And so, you know, that high T really kind of solves some of those, those critical problems. But, um, yeah, I, like I said, I think I, thank you very much for the presentation and, and for the information. And we certainly want that uh, electronic uh, <coughs> survey because we'll push that out and you'll, you'll get a flood of folks. It'll take you three days to go through them all, which I think is a, a wonderful testament to Maricopa and how, how uh, the citizens participate in here. So um, again, many, many thanks and we appreciate all your work. Any questions for, for Sean at this time? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I don't mean to be you know, negative or anything, but you know, we quite often go through a survey or study or, or look down the road, even, a, even in a, uh, an election, and someone gets in our way. Uh, are there those, uh, is there a possibility, or if, what is the possibility, I'm probably pretty great at me answer my own question, of someone or something getting in our way, and are you paying attention to that as well? so that we can mitigate it before it becomes more of a problem? I believe that um, all of the stakeholders that we have engaged are, are engaged and are, are very willing to work with us towards um, a very successful conclusion and some solid recommendations. I um, believe that I will need to do more work to engage the Gila River Indian community um, at the government to government level, uh, whereby they're focused a little bit more right now on a different corridor than State Route 347. They are definitely interested in our corridor. I have um, made attempts and sort of gotten a false run at asking their departments to be engaged in this stakeholder study, and I really need to ask it from a government to government level. So I'd say my only weak link has been my own inability and a lack of understanding of working with them. And I still don't believe that they're, they have an unwillingness. I think I have a learning curve. So I think that that is one area that will probably, I'll need to do some running to catch up with that community. I absolutely appreciate your candor and honesty. Thank you so much, very much for that. And I understand that there might be some difficulties there, but the fact that you realize and visualize opportunities to be able to circumvent any, any issues, uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you. And, and as that goes, it's interesting you say that because that's some, an area where myself and, and Vice Mayor Wade uh, have some connections that we've been working very closely Fantastic. with with the governor and the, the vice governor uh, on this particular topic for a long time, knowing that from, from our standpoint, you know, it's it's somewhat inappropriate for us to go and work with their staff. Uh, that's why we have a staff that works with their staff, but yet for us to work with their governor and their government uh, directly has been something that we've tried to keep that line of communication open. We've talked very heavily about this project. Uh, and so that, again, very aware, I think that helps bring them to the table at the staff level. But, you know, as we rise this up and as we need that government to government, please, you know, engage us as we'd love to uh, continue to further those um, those relationships uh, with bet. those contacts because we think that's going to be very, very important as we get to those critical stages. You bet. You bet. So, um, the one other thing I wanted to point out and, and to talk about to, to your question is that, you know, while this frustrates a lot of people, and I know it certainly frustrated us when we were going through the overpass process, but again, I think it protects you in the long run. And again, I, I'll be the first to, to tell you terrible stories about the NEPA process and, and, and other horrific uh, <laughs> things that you have to do because of the federal yeah. government. But at the end of the day, Day, I will tell you this also that uh, you know if you have to go through it by going through it appropriately is really important and and to your point vice mayor about you know those speed bumps you know the more time that you deal with with the DCR the design concept report and the NEPA process and the environmental assessments it, it just protects you that much further when you get to that that point of, of funding conglomeration and, and ultimately construction so uh, I think that again I hate going
going through it as well because it takes more time, but, but the time is well spent when you can protect yourself on the back end and actually get the project constructed versus having to spend a whole bunch of time uh, you know, fighting off those things. Well, I didn't know, or or, or, know, litigation, or litigation, as, as we right have on. been through with us on right. freeway. Right. So right. I certainly appreciate those comments. Yeah. I think there'll still be time um, to to get caught up with that community, and then I think it gives us a good jump start as we head into the design concept, which will be the logical next step behind uh, this uh, scoping study as well. So. I think there's still time to get caught up and, and engage that community. Can, can I ask one more question as it pertains to, obviously the Gila River uh, is uh, also in lockstep with the scoping study that happened simultaneously with MAG uh, on the I-10. And uh, you know another obviously very important corridor, uh, the spine of Arizona, uh, that allows so much uh, commerce and traffic to, to you know, go between all of these, uh, you know, very fast growing communities. Um, and with that, uh, I think we want to make sure that, that while, you know, while that corridor can very easily suck all the air out of the room because it's such a large project, uh, we certainly want to understand and, and be able to convey that, that you know, it's really this project in some respects that, that led the way to that, that, that we started the scoping study here and once we had agreement here, they actually surprised us by saying, well, let's do, let's do I-10 at the same time. And so I think that, you know, if we can kind of latch onto that and carry that forward by saying whatever we do on I-10, we should be doing 347, you know, kind of simultaneously, I think that there's uh, a good way to ride each other's coattails there and that might be a good thing. I so, think so too. Yeah. Okay. I think so too. Any other questions at this time? All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sean.